Hi, my name is Larry Jordan, and welcome to this Power Up webinar, taking an in-depth look at Adobe Media Encoder. With the new Creative Cloud release, Adobe has added some major new features into Media Encoder, which make it absolutely worth considering for any professional compression workflow. I think in a way that it's never really been qualified to handle much before the Creative Cloud release. I'm looking forward to showing all the new tools to you in this webinar. Adobe Media Encoder is the compression engine behind Prelude, Premiere Pro, After Effects, and Encore. Once you understand how Adobe Media Encoder works, which we all call AME because it's just easier to say, you unlock the export power of all these applications. Media Encoder simply does compression you create all of your creative effects in other applications. Now this is different than what Apple Compressor does. With Apple Compressor we have a wide variety of filters and effects that we can put into during the compression process. With Media Encoder you add those as part of your application like in Premiere. Media Encoder just compresses the file. One of the key benefits of working with video compression software is that the concepts and settings that you learned for one piece of software apply across multiple pieces of software. So if you already know how to compress files in Apple Compressor, or you know how to compress files in Telestream Episode, or Sorensen Squeeze, you're already a long way along the road to successfully using Adobe Media Encoder. The two key benefits to Adobe Media Encoder are tight integration with other Adobe applications, and the ability to create non-QuickTime files such as Flash and MXF in addition to a vast panoply of H.264, MPEG-4, and QuickTime movies. When you're compressing, you never worry about the format of your source media. You simply create settings to achieve the final result. All compression software automatically determines the specs of the source file and creates the destination file based on your settings. Media Encoder only needs to know where you want to go. It'll figure out where you're starting from. Now we can get into the new features in the Creative Cloud release of Media Encoder. First is the ability to pass through image size, frame rate, and field order, and other key settings when you're compressing for H.264 and MPEG-2. That's what Adobe's website says. I think we can also pass through when we're converting to ProRes. This pass-through makes Adobe Media Encoder finally worth considering for doing any kind of transcode work because prior to the Creative Cloud release, we could not reliably use it for transcoding because it would screw stuff up. Media Encoder has added background processing for Premiere Pro and After Effects plus tighter integration with After Effects. You can now send a comp to Media Encoder, bring that comp back to After Effects. You have support for more compression formats, Kindle, Nook, ProRes, Avid DNX HD, plus brand new MPEG-2 encoders with a new interface, better quality and faster, which means you get better results when you're compressing for DVD. You could use MPEG-2 for Blu-ray. File sizes are way too big. You're better off using MPEG-4, which is H.264 for Blu-ray. Although you could use the MPEG-2 encoders for both DVDs and Blu-ray. We can now export closed caption data and the whole program is faster. I mean much, much faster. So let me show you how to import a clip for compression, how to apply an existing compression preset, how to modify a compression preset, how to create a watch folder to automate compression. And keep in mind that when you're using watch folders, unlike compressor droplets, watch folders require media encoder to be running for watch folders to be enabled. And I'll show you how to access Adobe Media Encoder from within Premiere Pro, how to send a project from Premiere to Media Encoder for ultimate output. So there's a ton of stuff to cover. Let's get ourselves started. One of the other really cool things that we can do is that we can set our own user presets and groups. We could start either from a blank slate and create everything from the ground up, but it's easier to cheat. <laughs> I want to take, mm, let's use this AVC Intra codec. AVC Intra is a really high quality codec that's excellent for editing. If you want to have the fastest possible editing experience, you want to transcode your media from, say, H.264 or AVC HD that the camera shot, you want to transcode the media into something which is much more efficient for editing. If you're editing exclusively on the Mac, transcoding to ProRes is your best choice. 
If you're editing on a PC, you have two other choices, Avid DNX HD or AVC Intro 100. Notice this is AVC Intro 100 for a 720 image and AVC 100 for a 1080 image. Let's say, hypothetically, that I always want to transcode to AVC Intro. Grab this setting and drag it up on top of user presets and now it's created a favorite so when I hide the system presets, I'm not overwhelmed by all the choices I don't need to see. Instead, I'm just looking at those few settings in the user presets that I want to be able to work with. Applying it is still the same. Grab the preset, drag it on top of the clip, and that quickly we've added that particular transcode setting into or for that movie. Or we've got additional options. This plus allows us to create a new preset, which I'm getting to, I promise. This allows us to delete a preset. Let's highlight it. Hit the minus key and it's gone. We can organize our presets in folders, what Adobe calls a preset group. This allows us to say, these are the four settings I need when I'm compressing for the web. Small web, big web, YouTube, Vimeo. I now have those four presets inside a single folder. I can drag that entire folder over on top of the clip and poof, all four of those presets are applied at once. We can import presets. When Media Encoder first shipped with Creative Cloud, Adobe forgot to include all the ProRes presets. Well, they've been added in updates since, but what they did is they put a, a whole list of presets on their website. You downloaded the preset, clicked the import, pulled them all in. You had access to all of Adobe's ProRes settings, or you have created favorite settings that you want to share with other editors in your group. Click select the presets, click this button, which is the export presets. It exports them in a format that the other editors can import. They don't have to understand anything about how encoding works or media encoder. They just simply grab your presets and use those for compressing files. You can search by clicking in the search box and we can see what we've got to work with in here. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar taking an in-depth look at Adobe Media Encoder. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.biz slash store and look for Webinar 107. If you need to stretch your training dollars, a subscription membership to our video training library saves you money. You can access all of our videos for one low monthly price of only $19.99. That's more than 600 movies, dozens of hours of training, all in-depth and up-to-date. Plus, members can attend any of our Power Up webinars for free. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it every week. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.biz slash subscriptions. Thanks.